Hello, this is a free call from Charlie. An incarcerated individual at the Leon County Jail. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hey, I didn't know if you could hear me at the very end, but it went out. Yeah, no, there's a lot of times the internet drops for like two minutes and I got started back on. Um, now, Brady, it's just, I mean, the coincidence is, the motive for the person showing up at the fucking crime scene, as Catwoman said, she just couldn't help herself. When you're sitting there, you're a post fan, and you just look at the jury and you go, there's a lot of addresses in Tallahassee. The fact that she had to drive 10 miles to go in front of that house on that day on that time out of her way makes no sense to me. Like you just now you just start at 10 points behind. Now you start off explaining. And then what does my mom say when the undercover comes up to her? The TV costs about five. Dude, if he asked for fifty thousand, my mom would have said his car costs about five. I know how much fifty. I know how my mom costs. It's just 15 years ago, PVHS cost three, four, five thousand dollars. You know, There's like a that. lot of things that you have, a lot of coincidences, a lot of things that you did not. I got her, did I just get her TV or her divorce person and say it was cheaper than a hitman? Yep. Did I, did she have a TV repairman at her house fixing that very TV the joke was about the day the man was murdered? Yep. Mm-hmm. Did my mom reference TV? But here's the thing. My mom referenced it in the third call. Not the first call, not the second call, the third call. And when she said it, I go, the guy wanted $5,000? Like, repeated it back to her to make sure I got it correct. Like, so if it was such code, like if it was such code, why would it? You would have been like, I gotcha. Okay, and then, by the way, what is my mom in her first call that she's calling me? If it's such it code? One, one simple statement. It would have been that statement. Conversation over. Yeah. Who calls your mother? It would have been. So many times. Yeah, she and you called me. Questioning, trying to figure out what was happening. Yeah, I, she called me. Then I called her back a second time, and then I'm still at work. And I'm like, oh, my God. She doesn't say anything to my dad. She doesn't want to say anything to my sister. Like, so she's telling me I need to bring money. Like, it sounds like somebody's doing something to her. Like, let me see if it reminds me of what's happened to me. Like, I called her back, and I go, don't talk in the house, don't talk, you know, on the apartment anywhere. I'm like, let me ask you a question. Was it black, white, Hispanic? I said, was the, was the person wearing the glasses? Were they nervous or angry? You know, did they ask for money? And she said, yeah. But I'm like, you know what? It doesn't sound at all like the first extortion. Like, this is not the same people. I'm like, whatever, go to the police. And then I'm like, wait, let, you know, don't say anything to that. I'm like, let me ask you another question. Does it give you a time frame? And she's like, no. So I'm like, Yeah, and that's okay. when you were certain that, okay, this is not how it was yeah. done. That's not what happened. Yeah, I'm like, it's not how it's done. And I'm like, does it give you a time not real reason? No. Yeah, I'm like, no time frame. And she's like, it's clear what to ask for. I go, okay, what did they ask for? She's like, the TV is about five. Oh, brought it back. If she, if they would ask for 50 grand, she would never have brought TV. She would have said, this car is about 50. So if like, they wanted $5,000, she goes, yeah. And they mentioned the next girlfriend. And I was like, at that point, I go, oh, that's okay. I'll come down tomorrow and look at it and we can go for that. That was it. That was it. So that was that. That was the third fucking call. So TV is such an important code word. It took the third call for her to bring up the TV. I think she called me up on the first call and be like, "Hey, listen, um, can I ask you a question? I got a TV problem. Like, do you think uh, you want to come over to my place and look at the TV tomorrow?" Like, I think that will probably cost about five or something. Yeah, it would have been a little bit. Yeah. We're getting TV issues. And there's a TV problem. You want to? Come over my house and look at the TV bar, and I would fucking get it. That would be code, and that would be tipping me off. There was no fucking code. 
But because of the coincidences of the TV and her showing up at the crime scene, we started fucking 20 points behind. With a lot of serious, with a lot of serious, you can tell me, I'm, yeah, there's a lot of serious, like, you, you think I'm stupid if you want me to believe that. Now, now you got to prove everything else you're fucking saying. you got to prove it because I just gave you two of them that are coincidences. Serious ones that one of them you just told me it's a one in 10,000 chance that she shows up on that date on that time. And, like, that's where you started with. Now I, I can know, but even this, what do you think? I mean, those two coincidences, I, I still don't even fully, on, on top of a few other things, don't really resonate with me on how that has to do anything with you and why that, those oh, things, a million, a lot of the things were used against you. Oh, dude, and then my mom's email. Okay, I, I got CC right. on. Mom didn't like him. I got it. Mom didn't like the ex son in law. Like, a lot of moms don't like their ex son in laws. That's no, not That's what I said. It's a normal thing in America. Yeah. Like, it's everywhere. Family dynamics. But, like, that's you normal know, shit. Really? When your ex son in law is showing up at your daughter's work telling people that she's mentally ill, like, nobody would like their ex son in law. And they, they, they love to. Highlight the Markells of having their grandparents. They just stated, of, 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 you know, what Dan was trying to do by yeah. keeping like, wait, your grandparents I and mean, your parents. The irony is that my sister never tried to keep the grandparents from seeing her grandkids. It was only when they threatened to take the grandkids from my sister. Um, and Dan was very was big, finger pointing. Hey, I'm like, trying to ruin your life so I can have and she's like, No. Like, well, yeah. A very good effect. And then there's only one person the irony is there's only one person who's trying to prevent grandparents from seeing grandkids. That's a man. It makes so he no he was never gonna go anywhere. So the irony is of all people, my sister wasn't trying to keep the grandkids away from the grandparents. Danny was. But it literally got flipped on the head when they wanted to put my sister in jail to foster care for the kids. Like, that's so when my sister's like, okay, peace out. And I know, you can see how I it. noticed those little details of being in yeah, jail, being in prison, and just the like, outright just unjust of it all. He was being in jail, he was probably showing. It was maybe it was going after my sister's attorney's law license and suing both of that. And he was making it so she had to withdraw from the case. In twenty five years she never had to withdraw from the case for this reason. Like he was being a dick. So the answer was we'll be a dick back to him. Like I said I said it before. I said he was being a jerk, I told her to be a jerk. But like juror number fifteen had a brain. He understood what was going on. You can't take coincidences and take someone's life away. George Kaplan made it seem like, listen, y'all, y'all know what the common sense is. If your common sense tells you more likely this guy's guilty than not guilty, that's that's not a reason well, now people make it guilty, make it guilty. Like she made it seem so folksy, so like, dude, if you're gonna vote that somebody's gonna be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, that means that you are so fucking sure that this person did it. You're willing to bet your life or your family member's life that you know what the hell happened. Because if you're not, you're taking somebody's life. You're taking somebody's life from them. So you have to be so sure you know what happened. That's how Dan, Dan didn't do that speech. He should have. That's the only critique I have of the whole case with him is he had told me he was going to say that and he didn't say it. And Kaplan made it seem like... You know what? Like, like reasonable doubt, probable cause. Like, if you have a real good reason to think the other story is really true, then you got to move this. No, reasonable doubt is like there's no other way it could happen. Like, you're 99.5% sure. They, they pulled up me calling my parents' home phone number. I guarantee it because I knew my parents were home there. I called it from my cell phone to their home phone. That's not evidence. But but I, said you say, I said that was a good point. Like you're trying to say, like, um, he was trying to say that, like, you know, you had some intent on calling strictly to a landline. He called from his own cell phone to go in there. I talked to my mom today. They've had a 
had that phone number since 1975. Of course they have. <laughs> They, they had that phone number. It was a registered to my open house. Okay. Since 1997, I had that cell phone number. Okay. So I hold on my cell phone number from 1997 to their home that they've had. Really? You had your years. cell phone number since I was six years old? Well, it was in my car. I never actually used it, but I was just kept that same number from 18 days. Yeah. <laughs> in college, my mom got me one. It was a brick phone. I put it in the car, but I never even used it. But the point is, it's like maybe 98, but the point is, it's like, I always, always had that phone number. Always had that phone number. So I'm calling from my home, my phone, only phone number to my parents' landline. You know why? Because my parents were home and it's a better connection on a landline than when we're talking on a cell phone. A lot of stuff. So that's the thing. In 2014, my parents were there January, February, and half of March. They made up a chart that went from January 14th to December 31st to 16th. My parents sold their house in 15 and then moved out of it two and a half. Yeah, I know. I've been there. That's why there was only a couple calls in there. And I would have only called if I already knew they were at the house. That's why they never called the house. But then you have a, a, a demonstrative to show the first trip, the second trip, and that's the only time I called my parents the landline. What the fuck would I be hiding calling the landline of my parents' house from my cell phone? There is nothing to be hiding. That goes to show you that you're putting up demonstratives of stuff that goes to but these fucking morons, your landline, 99.8% of the time you never the call is up, and two trips up, and we got the monster guys, look at this, and they say it's just by chance. Yeah, it was fucking chance. That is going up. This is chance. Look at everything with a fine tooth comb. You're going to find that on these dates I call the parents home phone. What would I be hiding? I'm calling them on my cell phone. I'm not calling them on WhatsApp. I'm not calling your phone to call their their house. I'm calling on my cell phone to the house. No, nothing to hide. That's simple fact. But, it, but it's, you were right, like, hey, you know what? Give me a second. Let me call from my landline to your landline. Great. That's like I'm looking at the demonstrator to show the only time that Dan wears his red jacket is when he visits me in person. And he's had that jacket for 10 years. And he wore it for the only four times he wore it when he shows up in prison to wear it. How many days, you know what I'm saying? He's owned that jacket for 10 years and he's only worn it three times, and all three times when he shows up in prison. Yeah, it's statistically significant, but it proves absolutely nothing. But here's the thing now they have something else. You don't have DNA where you could like say a one in six billion chance that it was anyone other than you. Okay. No. You got me calling my parents' phone fucking phone number, and you're making a mushroom. You're making a point. You know what that point should have been for the jury? These people don't know what they're doing, and they're grabbing every fucking straw, trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. But they didn't see it like that. They saw another piece of evidence, and more reactions. And they're like, I, I should, I'm threatening to call the police, like. They played that around, spun it around, like, just trying to tell her I need her help, I'm not setting her up. Like, but by saying that, I figured she gets the point, because I was working with the police, I wouldn't be bringing up the police. I'm not working with the police, but we got warrants orders, I need your help. Like, Dan said he was, the case came in better than he hoped. He told me if I testified and he gave me a score of 70%, he would have, uh, Basically driving me home with the car if I if I scored a set of the on his scale. I get done testifying and he's like he's like you were you were false because I give you a ninety five percent. I was about to say ninety, yeah. He said he showed me a text message and someone not to say who it was sent him a text message that said like no Katie, but drop the mic. You guys just want the case. Yeah. I felt the same. 
But all these people blowing up the internet saying, like, holy shit, this guy's innocent. Okay. And I showed your mom proof of that. It was a huge, yeah. huge, huge change. Huge. Not for just black people in Tallahassee. They're very mm-hmm. middle class. And, and there's just three. already had their minds up, apparently. And twice. Not apparently. Put very it. clearly. Was it twice? And then, like, this is what happened. So he was stripped down and put on the table. And they put a close-up photo of his face from the autopsy. And she left me to do so. what I'd like to see. She, and then I have my computer screen in front of me. Because the prosecution has a computer screen in front of me, so it's like two feet by one feet in front of me. In front of the jurors, the screen is a 10 by 8 foot. So a 10 by 8 foot screen, you have this autopsy head and shoulders with a close up view, and it takes up the entire screen. And she left it up there while she spoke for about five or 10 minutes. Then she went to more slides, and then you know what she did again before they eat? Did you put it back up? Just fucking destroyed it. Up there on the screen. It's upsetting, it's sickening, or it happened to it, and you're looking at it. And you want it, and you want that just like that's not I any mean, that's that should not that should not be allowed to be I mean I mean they already showed it during the case, and I understand why they showed the autopsy photo. But now you're doing the closing and you're leaving it up two separate times for like 10 minutes to the jersey. And you can't look away, you're staring right at it. Like, totally done with it. Fresh blood everywhere. Like, you see his neck and his face. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I think and he's in the end. Um, you guys shouldn't even look at it. I, mean, I can't. I'm not and it, it can't. And, there was, and the thing is, is that the photo before, they show him in a certain time. Like the law professor, then the next photo is that, which is what happened to him. You want, you want to go after whoever they have in that courtroom. You're not going to walk out. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he was, she put together a dateline special with autopsy photos and made you look at those photos for at least 10 minutes. And then look, look who got and the And they with them and basically put out a whole seal of your entire family hating these type of people. Yeah. Like, type of people. Listen, like, my family is a bunch of fucking crazy lunatics writing emails wanting to get Hitler to use costumes for the kids. Chicken grand parents that they did in the show. No. Rich Jewish families, very successful families, and you, and they just don't like your type of people. Y'all, come on. Can you come and, and, and coming, coming from my Miami, Come up here on the on the little town on the way of civilization. Or just a stop along the way on the way back to civilization. That's what you do, Tallahassee. This was showing how the able because the rich Jews in South Florida are crazy, and they cause problems up here in Tallahassee. I mean, she was so it was so twisted and so made for TV. That somebody with a third grade mind, you can get really manipulated. And that's, that's what you have. It wasn't about evidence. I mean, what did they do? They brought in somebody who lied her ass off? I mean, she lied. She lied in the fucking first trial. She lied in the second trial. She lied in her first proffer. She lied in her second proffer. And then we caught her in lies coming in the courtroom on, uh, in the courtroom when Dan was questioning her. Okay, so she basically brought in a lot of witnesses against me. And Luis Rivera said, yeah, she lied to me too. It could have been an extortion. And right then and there, I'm like, holy shit, like, that's the case. That is the focus of the case. But what happens is they let all of these extrinsic factors become the focus of the case. From TV set, the liquor bottle, the, the round taken, the cell phone number dialed. The text messages to Kissy Face, like, you're going to tell me that if I didn't send those text messages to the Kissy Face, I wouldn't be spending the rest of my life in prison? Like, I didn't think she was part of it. So why would I just not send her, like, you got to take the context of what it says, who's sending it. You know, if it's someone who never sends a Kissy Face, then they send one, like, oh, that's odd. 
you use that emoji all the time. My way of saying thank you. Right. But like, if it's the only time I've ever used that emoji for anyone on planet Earth, then you could be like, oh, maybe he's trying to send a message. But like, you could you could send fifty faces like a thank you. That like, doesn't. You know, or if you're sending it to someone that you hate, it's like, well, fuck you. It's like the context in which it's sent. So it's the context is who's sending it, why they're sending it. It gives meaning to it. You know, just like what Ryan sent to you was obnoxious and fucking a piece of shit like today. But if it was actually coming from a friend that cared about you, you'd be like, that's like every show. That's that's context. That's the definition of context. You know who's sending it. You know why they're sending it. You know how they're sending it. You can't just read that message and go, "Oh, what a what a thoughtful, caring guy." Because no, what a fucking piece of shit. This guy stole money from Roman Trust and everything he could to get me put in prison, and then got rid of my friends. That's like the trifecta. Take your life. Take your friends. Take your money. Okay, but you, how is this, how, how are you holding up? Oh, that's a very, very sweet message, of course, the capital. Checking in on you and seeing how you're holding up. But that's, that's why without context, nothing means anything. Like, you can't put just sentences up. You put that sentence up, you say he's a warm, caring guy, right? Now you have context to it, and you look at it, and you want a piece of shit. That is the definition. That's the fucking definition of contact. How like that is for for me to have Josh Dubin come out. He has a team of four people work on the case. He has himself, this guy Renato, and these two other guys. Him and his two other guys came out to the, to the jury selection. Bernardo has seen me in the prison probably four times. Like, he's a brilliant, brilliant, top of the um, like, worked with a federal prosecutor, worked for, like, the, one of the best firms in the United States, one of the hardest in the workforce. I forget his name, but it's just, like, Dan says to me, like, he can never get a job working for this. I think it's called Kramer or something like that. He's like, it's a deep top firm. He's like, you got to be top of your class, Yale Law School. Like, it is the fucking best firm ever. Or he's like, it has like, he's like, he can never really want that. He's like, it's, so if someone says they work there, they can write their own ticket. The point is, it's like, he was working on a case. Dan was working on a case. Dan ate, lived, slept in the case. Like, he would go on bike rides with the podcast. He would be in the car. He read every fucking blog. He got different ideas and different blogs on what people were writing, what people were talking about, what people were looking into. Like, he has never known a case this well this far in advance to trial in his life. Insane. I mean, how old is he? 47, 48. Oh, okay. So he's your age. He looks, I mean, honestly, I just, I can't get over the fact that you, the entire time, between you standing next to Dan and you standing next to um, the girl, yeah, Kate, uh, she, you, the entire trial, you look like, like a basketball player. I, I know, I know. Every camera, camera point, every, like, I mean, truly, it made you look like you were, like, six five six six. Yeah, no, no, it's all perspective. I mean, I'm standing, standing probably five five. Right. So, so but the, the I point is, that. he's, he's, yeah, he looks young. I mean, he, um, but yeah, I was curious to know actually how old he was. I haven't done any research on him, so I mean, yeah. you're, no, his background, I, I had no idea. The okay. idea is he's he incredible, and I'm sure he is pissed because now I know oh. his background. He's like, this is, this is. By the way, I'm going to sleep right now. But, um, like, I'm sure you said this is bullshit. Great. He, and then, like I said, he's like, he never brought the case to the prosecutor. He knows the case, he, so he knows cases from the prosecutor's side. So, you may think that that was scripted with me and him. 
you know that none of that was scripted? He said, I'm just going to go up there and see how it's going and just go bit by bit and I'll bring you food to and stuff. I'm like, man, shit. He's like, I don't want you to know exactly what I'm going to do. I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I don't even want you to have the close questions that I plan on asking. I go, why? He goes, because, look, if you get up there with me and you get an A, and then you go up there and then Catherine and gets a shot at you and you get a C with her, he goes, how's that going to look? It's going to look like I prepped you. It's going to look scripted. It's going to look scripted. It's going to look scripted. You knew the answers before I asked the questions, and you look like an A student, and then she gets up there and makes you look like a C B student. So he said, you have to be as good with me as you are with her, and you win. Because this, because this whole case, this is what he said to me a hundred times. Look, I can, get, I can get you there because this case is going to come down to you and how well you do across. He goes, you'll be fine with me, you'll be fine with her. He goes, because I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to ask. You have to be ready to answer anything on this case, anything. So I said, okay. So it worked, and I, I, I got good at, like, you know, any possible, you know, and I mean, it was easy because I was telling the truth, but I didn't have to practice. And I was like, all right. I went up there. I did just as good with her, they said, as I did with them. She got frustrated. I'm just sitting yeah. there and telling the truth. So the people that have been her, like, her. Is like totally her biggest fan even said, Wow, that was a huge disappointment. Oh wow. I thought she was gonna do better than that. Oh wow, I thought she was gonna have a uh aha moment. That didn't happen. And they're like, you know, and then it goes on to your defense. Well, he's doing really good. Uh Charlie was a way better Charlie was a better lawyer than Kaplan than Georgia. Actually, that was the exact comment. I sent a screenshot of that from thought to your parents. I mean I, I literally sent it like twelve and I, I didn't want to bombard them on the table, like there was tons. And just I mean, it was insane how you did change third perspective, meaningless, worthless, doesn't matter opinions. But how you change that, and it all came down to those 12 people that had their mind up from the beginning. They, they are. And that is what is the and, and they said to me, how you testify is going to determine whether you walk out of there or not. And I approach it like that, and I believe that. I drank the Kool-Aid. Because before, I said to myself, there is no way to tell half the jury with all this fucking nonsense that they're throwing around, whatever. Whatever set me free if I come up to Tallahassee. It will convict me no matter what. And you know what? Josh Dubin at Dubin Institute. You ever hear of Cordoza Law School? Cordoza? I've heard of Cordoza. Yeah. yeah. I, I've heard Cordoza of it. I don't know. Yeah. Like very, Cordoza Law School is very prestigious. He has like an institute at the Cordoza called the Dubin Research Institute, like for criminal justice. Like he is, if you look up Josh Dubin, you'll see who he is. So he was the one actually questioning all these jurors. We put in a change of venue in the middle of the day because we're like, we're not going to get a fucking fair jury up here. We're not. And then Judge denied it. We just kept going through it. We're, we're using our exes to get rid of the 911 operator's aunt and the, the girl who's got a sheriff's officer boyfriend. And that, one that's a professor at Florida State and was fucking you know, lieutenant in the Miami Police Department. Like, it was like the couple good ones that would have been good for us, they used their exes on. We just used the ones on people that would have been horrible for us. But Dan even said, because the ones that we, we got, I really question how truthful they even were. Because, you know. They were. They said they knew nothing about the case. Boom. You're going to get on. They're not going to sit there and say, yeah, they said, yeah, I'm aware of the case. Oh, yeah, I can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not in a situation that I can, you know, I, I can be straight. I can be fair. I can be, oh. I can, you know, I can, I can absolutely. And then, no, these are people that literally sat there and said, you know what, my mind's already made up. There's no change in my mind. I can see two or three of our jurors that we had to use actors on. They go, oh, yeah, I, I heard the podcast over my dead body, and I saw a on also. Okay. So basically you knew very 
detailed information about this case. Yeah, how to get rid of it now. Yeah, get rid exactly. of it. Uh, you said it could be fair, so you don't get struck for cause, but I think anybody who just said that they've seen the podcast, the six-part, six-hour series on my fucking case, cannot be fair. I shouldn't have to use my ex on you. You should be eliminated now. Like, I'm using my exes on this shit, so it's not like I'm really not even getting any exes, and then you get your exes to cherry-pick one that you would look at, and then you know they need to give me a fair shake. It would be a ten. It would be a ten. It'd be normal ass people, but those aren't real normal people. Those, those are few and far between. And those are the ones that they fucking get off the jury. They took care of them. Yeah, the people. Yeah, they knew. They knew who was going to give me a fair shot, and they got those people off. The three, but the way this case came in. And someone would have asked on Friday, he said to me, if someone could meet you to say who would be where we are today on Friday, his answer would be who would be exact. Yeah. That's how I went into the weekend. Dan would be ecstatic if the case came in as good as it did. I'm being told no Katie, but drop the fucking mic. So I'll text message. Really, I talked to him on the Monday morning saying, this is going to be great. I cannot wait to have, you know, and, you know, obviously. The next call I thought was going to be like, let me get home. Let me gather my thoughts and let's get a date together to where I can see what, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was, that was, that was my mentality. Monday morning. I planned to figure out a couple of days for myself in the house where I was going to go to a hotel and park myself in a hotel for a couple of days just to decompress and go see Roman within the week. Yeah. Spend three, four days by myself, just get my thoughts together, just decompress from this place, have a cocktail, smoke a joint, and then by the weekend, you know, just hang out with Roman and go there for a couple of days. Like, and then we gather a, a plan or anything, whatever, uh, like, it's just it's moved on. It's literally, and it's literally like, I went from, like, celebrating life to dying. The rug was pulled up under you. Right, I'm sitting making trust for home. I'm, I'm sitting here making plans for selling my house. And, like, what am I going to do with all my belongings? All my clothes, I don't need clothes anymore. I mean... I don't know, put it in boxes. What do I do with all my photo albums? All my belongings, I'm done. I'm literally like you know, living in a concrete shop. And it's and the thing is, is like I know I'm in the book of people that have all have life sentences. They have nothing to lose. But they have to put me to that potential. They have to be too high profile. Someone will kill me just to say they killed me. Like they, they can't put me with regular people. Like, it's so fucked up what just happened. And it's like, oh, you think he's guilty? Like, all the things you brought into the case that turned the tide, that set that jury off, was all this shit that had nothing to do with me. I mean, yes, there's some coincidences. And here, let me put it to you this way. If my sister knew it was going to happen, and that's why she showed up there, then you have to say he's definitely involved. I have, if my sister showed up there that day because she couldn't help herself and Catherine comes right, you just look at me and go, he's definitely involved. There's no way not. And that's basically what I think it came down to in their lives is they dumped it down to some events that you go one in 10,000. There's no way she's showing up without having prior knowledge. That's his girlfriend. That's the connection. Like, I don't buy the story. Thumbs it down, and then you sit there and look at his autopsy photo, and you want to kill somebody. Yeah. You want somebody to pay. Yeah. Do you think it was and that's the last thing you're looking at as you go back? And truthfully speaking, if I was a juror, which I would never be, if I had any, you know, just my mind set up, this would be. I mean, seeing that last photo, and then having someone basically tell me like, "Yeah, this family looks completely down on people like you." Yeah, they, Pretty much they, 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 yeah, they're, 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 they're thumbing their nose to you in Tallahassee while she's making her sweet getaway to Miami that she wrote about six years ago. They early. went back and they said, look, this person's going to pay. You're, you're just 
would it say it's a it's a it's a stop and road of the way civilization. That's who you are. I know what. With her professor husband and two kids and she's an immigration lawyer. Sounds really familiar. Just to stop on the map on her way to civilization. Where is Mandy go is in forty eight hours of man being shot. Hey, I mean, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you talked to the boys? My sister told me they took a dad. They said they almost sold your tank. They what? I'm Just talking helps you a little bit, but like what I said, I'm going to sell right now for you. One of the walls, shit of the walls, and shit off the beach, and all the way, going through shit and food around the world. I got the suicide I those cell. two boys love you very much, and I just said, There's a fucking camera and a kind of one way mirror that you can't see through, and that's the door. So I got a fucking camera, and there's the lights on 24 7. I've been here since Monday, Wednesday night. I have been out of the cell for 20 minutes in the last, since Monday. The lights don't have the brightest shit, they're fucking. Uh, a mental, a mental institution, I can imagine. got I got two bowls in there that are so long, arrested bowls in a room that's fucking nine by six with a bed in the middle of the box. And a sink in the floor that the floor has a piss hole in a box. Since months, since I got charged, since I had to pay the other day in this fucking box. I just them, like, dude, I'm fine. I'm not going to kill myself. But you're making me, like, you're putting me in a bad place by sticking me in, like, I want to be where I can talk to people and move around and just walk around and sit down in the table. No, it's like they put someone there to try to, like, make sure that they're not a certain way, but it's like the, what you're doing is making them probably want to be that person. Yeah. Yeah, because I think of people getting convicted of what I just got convicted of. A lot of people just say I'm going to kill themselves, so I kill them. Yeah, well, how, what you're in right now probably doesn't make you want to kill yourself. I mean, honestly. Kind of a shock. Yeah, no, the force got pissed off. It's just blood, a little bit of blood all over the fucking wall. And there's shit on the ceiling. The keys on the fucking ceiling. That's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, I'm not One fucking germ at 12 could have, could have stand up. I said to Dan, I said, you could try this case a hundred times in this town, and we're not going to let you. And he said, not with that germ. I said, the problem is, we used our exes to get rid of people that fucking saw the podcast, listened to the podcast. They use their taxes to eliminate any chance they have a guy that's shooting a character. Because the problem was 90% of people who came out from the jury were absolute shit. The one in 10 that I said, one in 10 or the two in 10 that we were coming across that would have given me a fair shot, those people got X call. And they can identify them easily. Because it would have probably been a white, intelligent, successful man. As far as the witnesses go, like, okay, because everyone on like, the public um, side, why wasn't Robert? I mean, obviously that was his choice, but like, were they not intent on having Robert be a witness? Like, Who, Robert, my brother Robert? Yeah, you're sure you brother Robert, yeah. Yeah, well, no, the state, the state never called him. But I mean, we weren't going to call him. We didn't talk about him. Oh, of course not. But like, the state, no, they could have called him. They could have called if they wanted to. Why did you guys not call um, Mike? Um, it, it was it was after the fact. It was after the ball, and they were gonna they were gonna definitely have you know I'll talk about it another time, but there was there was strategic reasons behind it. 
nothing to do with my fucking case. And what happens up here is exactly what I foresaw happening. And I hate that for you because honestly,
Hey, I think the phone cut off again. If you can hear me, you can either call me back, but your mom, I, I texted your mom saying that you're going to call her back in five minutes. Okay, so I love you. If you can hear me, I love you very much. Okay, and call us tomorrow or call me back, okay, if you can hear me. All right, I love you.